Ah. It's a crowded area. Um, thought we could have a look at some fans this time. Yeah. So, if we switch over here. Um, now I'm going to focus on case fans. So here I have the three that I bought for the um, channel PC upgrade project. And what I thought we'd do is we could unbox these and um, discuss about fan selection a bit, what, what should one take into account. And then um, also um, and also maybe we could try and power up um, you know, one of them or both. So let's have a look at the you know so I'm gonna just open open the, up this one. This is a Corsair uh, ML 120 millimeter fan with um, built-in white LEDs. If there's some background noise, it's my kids. <laughs> They've got some friends friends over and they're playing. See, I haven't unboxed this before. So, let's see. Let's see what it, oh, look at that. Yellow package. Well, that's kind of smart. Actually, it comes with some with some um, screws. Oh, that's nice. So, okay. Anyway, um, just thought I'd say a few words about fans. I mean, they come in various different sizes, and I thought it was kind of easy to just go buy a fan. But then I realized that they, you have a, any, everything, like you have. 40 millimeter, um, 80 millimeter, 92 millimeter. I would say 120 is quite standard. 135. There are some fans that can go like fit both 135 and 120 fasteners. 140 and then 180. So if you're gonna like, if you're planning to buy fans, then you need to take into account what is the what is the size? This is actually quite heavy. Um, they have different types of bearings, so that's the part where when you rotate the fan. It's um, running on a on a bearing solution, and there's many different kinds. The sleeper, the cheaper ones use slip bearings, so it's basically mechanically just yeah one one. Um, surface rubbing on the other <laughs> and then but then you have a nice solution and the, this is like magnetic levitation so this one is actually magnetic and um, then you also have the, some fans that are um, no, fluid bearings uh, it's also important to know that um, sometimes you have um, have um, pressure fans and they're meant to um, create um, air pressure, and then there are those that are for, um, you know, creating air flow. I have to go and tell my kids to take it easy. Be back in a sec. 
So, back again. <laughs> Kids. Anyway, um, yeah, and then you have to sort of think a little about the, um, probably not critical, but the airflow direction, like which direction the airflow goes. And usually it should be indicated somewhere. Let's see. Okay, well, this fan doesn't indicate very well. Oh, that's strange. Usually it has an arrow. It says in which direction the airflow goes. Okay, I have to start it up and test it and find out in which direction the airflow goes. If that's not the very small arrow showing the airflow. Let's see. No, that's just a recycling indicator. Ah, oh, that's that's bad. I mean, why can't they just put an arrow to say which direction the airflow goes? Because when you're actually putting putting this on to the to the case, then you would actually would like to be able to know without actually having to start the start the fan. Okay, but that was that. Um, and then there are different types of um, connectors. So here you see this one has a four pin connector. So basically there's uh, like three pin connectors. So then it has uh, ground supply voltage and a taco sensor, which means that it can tell if the fan's rotating and then um, get the speeds. And then if you have four pins, then um, it adds uh, the fan speed control so then it can actually um, adjust how fast the fan um, rotates so it's the pulse width middle modulation uh, yeah. you also yeah, when you're buying fans then you have to look at what kind of yeah where are you going to connect the fans and do you have four pin a four pin connector doubt that any motherboards have only two pin connectors anymore because that would just be ground and supply and what we're going to test, I think all fans will work without the um, pulse width modulation connected. So you can just give it power and then basically it will, it will go at full speed. So we will be testing that. And um, ah, the speeds can, can vary quite a bit. You, know, you can have 300 to like two and a half thousand RPM. So, and of course the higher the speed, the usually the um, louder it can be. Okay, that was just my son wanted to ask some. Seems to be a kid disturbing day. I might have to redo this video. We'll see. I'll add this to over. And then um, you have also how much um, CFM this uh, the fan can actually pass which is actually the um, cubic feet per minute so how much what is the volume of air it can um, push through the fan and then there's noise level also so um, yeah, uh, however they measure that is a bit questionable so I would say maybe 20 if it's this if it's a like a brand fan and it says some um, 20 decibels then you can sort of have that as a starting point and say okay I'll try that. Then there's the thing of course because this is a mechanical component that has a mean time before failure so um, you know you can't expect it to run forever but I would think that on the rate the one upgrades the PC well like keeps the system for seven years and maybe upgrades it every three three four years I don't think the one will have a failure of a fan not in the PC usage, especially if you have um, also fan speed control. Uh, and when you're buying like a collection of fan, you have to sort of look at your case and decide how you're going to have the fan layout and then you should try to have a situation where you have positive pressure inside the case so you're not actually um, creating a, um, a, 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 you know, you're not drawing air um, into the case so that it will bring dust with it. So pumping more air into the case than actually is needed is, is good.
but make sure you actually do have an exit or otherwise the case will just get too hot. So you have to both bring in air and, and exit there. Yeah, and then um, screws and cages are nothing to ignore. But it was nice to see that they actually did include some screws with this fan. And then in some in some cases you actually have brackets that you can put fans in. So that's uh, also a thing that one has to check. Uh, so, so that's that. I was just thinking maybe we could... Um, I need to see the full functionality, I suppose. One will have to wait until I have the complete PC built on. But I was thinking we could try and power up this fan. Let's see if I can... If it would actually work. If I can identify identify the pin layout here. It's going to be maybe a bit tricky. Let's see now. I'm just looking on the net here if I can see how I can identify. See, all the wires are just black, so no, no idea. So one needs to identify where. Just looking at a picture here, so maybe that should be like one and two. Oh, well, we'll see. What will happen? Power supply here, so I'll just switch it on here. Hey, look! It started to turn. That's only on five volts, so that's pretty good. Pretty good speed at five volts. Okay, let's see if it. Well, that's twelve volts. And that's the nominal voltage of this um, fan. Yeah, not that bad. <laughs> I would recommend running it without the... I wonder if it can stand. Oh, look at that, it can stand up. So anyway, the airflow direction is that way. <laughs> can figure that out, just by feel. And as I said, this is neutral color, so this is just white LED. So there's no... No other corner, so I'm going to have one one neutral color fan. Well, that's actually quite nice. And then this will, uh, when it's in the case, it'll have pulse width modulation, so it won't run at full speed. And I mean, the it's a little bit false with noise because my table can vibrate, so, so I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't take that as a face value for the noise level, if you can hear it in the in the microphone. Okay, well, that was. Oh, it was cool that one could power it up the right way, so I didn't blow it up. Could have connected the cables in the oh, wrong way. So, anyway, so that was the um, Corsair fan unboxing. So that one. So make sure I can show. 120 millimeter, as I said, magnetic level levity. Not cheap. <laughs> I mean, you can get like a cheap fan for, oh, what would it be in dollars? That would be um, six dollars, seven dollars, and this is like twenty-five dollars. So, 
get what you pay for. Anyway, here's a little bit more exciting kit. Um, NX XT, and it actually has um, yeah, RGB LEDs in built with a control module, and then there's software related so you can control this through USB. I have not opened this, so I don't actually know what it looks like. So we'll open it up and see what we can find. So. I will keep actually keep the Corsair fan in its box until I actually install it. So that's nice and safe. Put it on the shelf and so I put it in the PC. So what do we got here? I don't know if I can actually power this one up. So here we have a control box with no visible connect. Oh, there's the connectors. So there you see a whole bunch of. We have the uh, USB and then the two outputs, the fan and a very strange DC voltage connector. So we're going to have to see what kind of cables this comes with. control unit and it controls this control unit controls two fans but um, I think this protocol system that they use can support even more fans it's the HUE control mechanism the idea being that it's a control mechanism for RGB light. Okay, let's see. And I should have two fans in here. Not want to come out. Oh, gotta be careful where our cable is connected. Oh! Okay, let's take everything out, shall we? Let's go. Seems to have an instruction manual. I hope that's an instruction manual. We have two fans. And then, otherwise, it's just an empty box. Thirsty work talking. Okay. Uh, so what do we do? We have two fans. And now we have a bunch of extra cables. So let's have a look. Or should one read the instructions first? Maybe we, do it. Maybe we chicken out and see if the instructions will say. up with um, uh, uh, RGB um, 
lead strips also that I haven't got in. I won't have any. I'm just gonna have this. Whoa, okay, so then we also nice to see that we actually get some screws for the fans. So that's nice. And then we what do we get in terms of cables then? This is a four pin. Okay, well. Okay, this must be the power. So here you have the connector for the power. PCB powered on. Okay. Whatever reason that is for. What? Screws. Okay, so these must be. What? Okay, there's some like extension cables. Don't know why. Probably for the RGB strips, and then it's that one. And what the? I, I don't think I actually need any of these. Hmm. What do I actually need? So the kit comes with a very small text. I'll have to take the magnifying glass here. Pause the video. Oh, come on. Wait. Straighten up the tape. There. Try and hold it. There. So now I can see it. Now have I look myself, so what do we got here? Hey, okay. Six centimeter low noise adapter. Six centimeter extender cable. Ten centimeter fan to fan cable. Fifty centimeter fan to fan cable. Why does it say fan to fan? Because these. These must be resistor modules, so that you can slow the fans down. But then that doesn't make no. But that doesn't make any sense. They're pulse pulse width modulated. Oh, I will probably have to for parts of this. I'll have to come back when I'm actually building up the PC, and then we can actually see. But what I was intending to do is that I think that we could actually try and. I don't know what's going to happen if you if we just connect the power. But will it run at all? But you know, it's always fun to test things. Okay, are we learning things here? Doesn't that go dark? Okay, right. So there is something. Mm.
Ah, okay, sorry. I didn't mean to understand this. So, okay, so the fans go... The fan control is done by the motherboard, so it's not routed through this. So this control mechanism is seemingly only for RGB. So does it mean that we then... Make it complicated to test. See now. Oh wait, comes around. So okay, that connector goes into that hole. I'm quite confident about that. Just a sec. No. That should have to fit in there. Ah, you need to really push it in. So okay, it does go in there. Well, I don't want to push too hard. First time on those things, I'm going to end up breaking something. Okay. This one will go. Crazy. There's no other option. Oh, this is crazy. Why, why would they make connectors that are so difficult to put in? Instructions. Okay, wait a second. In and out.
Take the cable that has in and out. And we have to plug it in the out. Okay. And then this one will then continue into the next fan. fans then okay then it isn't it equipped then to handle But that's only using one channel up here, then. So the fans can be connected to the motherboard or to a separate fan controller. So okay, so this ultimately handles only USB. Or no, that uh, handles the uh, RGB LEDs. Since I don't have a motherboard, I can't. But anyway, look, if this is going to be just lights only, then might we? And I don't know if this has a default execution or what it will do by default if we just give it a bit of power. Okay, so what we have now is that you have this one for the LEDs. Okay. And then here's the power coming into that. And then the, um, the lead for the RGB LEDs goes to the first fan. And then you put it into the... That's the inside and then it comes from the outside and then it goes into the other one inside and that's for the USB and that's for okay this is for an RGB slip this is for this is for the RGB um, strip, if one would add one. So the one actually has one channel free for the RGB strip. Well, if I wanted to see it doing something, then what do we do? Should we just try and power it up and 
Well, then the fans won't turn, but the, li the lights should come on. Because I actually don't have enough ca cabling to, um, to try and fire that up. Fire the fans up. If I don't do it this as a separate test. Why don't we just do that as a separate test? And again, they don't give any coloring on the cape. Oh, now I have to do the test again. One, two. That's 12, 12 volts. And the airflow direction is that way. Well, those are quiet. I think, statically speaking, these are quieter than the other. Quite nice. So, okay. Turn the voltage down. Turn the power supply off. So anyway, that was a bit of a test of the fan. Can't power them up. No, I would actually. No, what am I doing? I wasn't going to disconnect. Or did I? I was going to try to connect this one now. in there and this and that one will go in there. Alright, okay, and then we need to remember this is probably f this is five volts, so not not twelve volts, five volts. So let's not <laughs> power. Let's see, I don't I don't know, maybe it needs the USB um, control to actually do anything. Three volts, four volts. So it could be that one actually does require to, uh, yeah, send a control signal from the software to this box before one can actually get these to show anything. So that's five volts. And it says that it's taking 10 milliamps, so. but there's no lighting up. Hey, Baba. So, back again. Yeah, it looks like that we can't get any lights on this with, with this setup, because I think you need to have this um, USB um, cable connected and um, the software running. So I don't, don't have that prepared, so we're going to have to wait until the build's done to actually see what the colors look like. So anyway, this is, this is the general layout. Um, we have... Um, it's correctly connected, so this is the um, LED controller. And it feeds to one fan, which then uh, goes in, in um, series with the other fan for the LED. And then the fans have their typical control headers that can be connected to the motherboard and or um, and fan controller as usual. This needs to be put to 5 volts and then the USB adapter goes onto the motherboard one head and then it plugs into the into the controller. Then we have some extension cables, like they were different sizes, and this is low noise, so basically it has a resistor in it to um, slow down the fan. I don't 
think to us. I don't know what the logic of having this is that if one has uh, pulse width modulation anyway. Maybe it's just to slow the fan down even more. And then this is for um, a for the uh, yeah, if one has one of those RGB um, strips, then one can use that. So that was that was that one. Boy, I can't get the cap back on again. That's strange. And then it came with screws. There are actually four. Seems to be these are probably for the fans. That one and that one is for the fans. And this is not really sure how one uses those. I think ah okay, you screw from behind somewhere and into these slots, I would think, into these holes to secure this box. Well, anyway, that was exciting, so I'm just going to package this up a bit. Um, waiting for the uh, main installation. And disconnect these cables. And just pile them up. Ready for the build. Put all those. I might, might actually leave this connected like this. <laughs> I can remember I read the instruction. Oh, no, I better actually say it has nothing about the software in this instruction. So, well, I think that ah, that's a separate download. Now I can download the software. There's no media in the in the box included. Then I'm going to pack it up like this, put the screws at the bottom, and then put the cables in here, and then have the instruction there, and that on top there, and then I'm just going to leave it that, that kind of package um, until I get to the next phase of the operation. But anyway, Hope you found this interesting, even if it was a bit confusing because I didn't rehearse this. And I'm sorry about my kids disturbing a bit, but that's what they're allowed to do. And um, yeah, if, if you like this, found it useful, then um, you know, remember to subscribe. Hit the bell if you want to be notified of future videos because I'm going to actually continue this, so you're going to actually see this. Um, I'm going to try and uh, video the installation of these in the case and the actual then when we activate the software to see how it actually works. And um, yeah, that's it. So anyway, I'll see you in the next one.